And so when I say Chinese, I want you to scream out the, na the nation that's associated with this. For example, if I say Chinese, you're going to say what? China. All right, let's say it with authority. When I say Chinese, you say what? China. All right, that's just a, a test right there. So here we go. Chinese. China. Russian. Russian. Italian. Italy. German. German. Swedish. Swedish. Korean. Korean. Egyptian. Egypt. Nigerian. I hope you were able to successfully identify the issue. I, I'm, I'm so glad you're here because you can bring great clarity. Can you tell us a little bit about the Sephardic Jews and how they were scattered because um, they went west? I sure can. Because the reason why I want to is because a lot of them, and a lot of people don't know this, are in the Caribbean. They are. In the islands. And I know you're that. one of them. I and know I'm that. one of them. <laughs> I know that. Uh, because, you know, a lot of folk don't know that the, those roots of them were the first um, batches of slaves that came to Jamaica, they were the Sephardic Jews. It's documented. And they're all over the, Caribbean, all over the Caribbean, South America, Central America, yeah. and even the central, South Central United States. Wow. And DNA testing is a factor in all this now. Strong G, 3526. Niger. Niger. Strong's G, 3526, Niger, Niger. Genesis chapter 11, verse 10, explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. Want to say peace and blessings, family. Hope all is well with you guys. Uh, decided to do a last minute live. Normally, I try to do something on Bible study. Uh, we had a great Bible study today. And um, I decided to do a brief lesson tonight. And I want to clear up some things, right? Because, uh, you know, just even thinking about the scriptures and I want to show you some things that's going to catch some of you guys by surprise. And for those who have already taught, the person that I'm going to focus on today is an Israelite, but may not have had the uh, full understanding or the approach that uh, will make it easier to bring clarity. Well, guess what? That's what we're going to do tonight. Tonight, I'm going to prove that Simeon is an Israelite. Yeah, family, I'm going to prove to you that Simeon, he is an Israelite. And I'm going to show you how to go into the scriptures. I'm going to show you how to put it all together.
not just Simeon, but I'm going to show you that Simeon was uh, the head niggas in charge. What? Yes. I'm going to show you that Simeon. I'm going to show you Simeon. So anyone, <laughs> I'm, I'm very confident, anyone who uh, wants to challenge me on this, anyone that feel like they can uh, come against this, I can... I can knock you down with these scriptures because unfortunately family we've been taught you know i'm gonna keep saying this we've been taught incorrectly we've we have been taught to approach the scriptures from a colonized genocide mindset so again family i'm going to prove to you that simeon Mm -hmm. The one that we've been institutionalized, that we've been programmed and wired to call him Niger, when actually his uh, title, right? His title is actually Negus. Let me play it for you real quick, and then we're going to get into the lesson. Let me play it for you again. I played it. I played it for you purpose, uh, you know, purposely. I did it in, uh, intentionally played it. So that way you can kind of get uh, warm and fuzzy to understanding where I'm, where I, I am. Excuse me, where I am going with this. And for you guys to have brothers and sisters that are still inside the church, those that still want to fight against the pricks, kicks to get kicked against, uh, against the pricks. Let them see this video. Right. Let me start it off with this and then we'll get into the lesson. It's going to be a simple, straightforward lesson. This is not all the presentation. I got some surprises once I finish uh, the road to Savannah. I'm going to do a special teaching, a full documentary. Actually, it's not going to be a teaching. I'm going to put it in the form of a documentary dealing with the word niggas and showing you the deception behind it, the calculated attack behind it. So let me share you share with you this real quick. This uh, about a fifteen second clip. Listen closely. Share the video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video, family. That's the key. You have to share this video. Strong's G thirty five twenty six. Niger. Niger. Strong's G, 3526, Niger, Niger. All right. So you heard it with your own ears that it's not Niger, it's Neger, right? It's not Niger, it's Neger. So let me go ahead and set you guys up here. Let me get to, uh, let, let me get to the actual scriptures the point in this presentation i want to get to let's get to it i'm not going to go through all of this i am not going to deal with atheops tonight right but i am going to start right here i'm going to start with the yeah let's start right here let's just start with uh the etymology dictionary definition of nigger. Let's deal with the etymology of nigger. Let me show you how Negro and nigger, they are the same word. So I'm going to start off with that and then we're going to set you up. I'm going to use that to kind of take you right into Simeon. And I'm going to prove to you that Simeon is an Israelite. Matter of fact, I want to prove to you everyone that's mentioned inside that passage with Simeon. They are Israelites. Very simple. Here's the playbook to it. So let me enlarge in this screen here. I'm going to get straight to it. Here we go. Let's get into it. Let's go a little geek mode. All right. Let's start with the online etymology dictionary. Actually, we're going to uh, compare that to the Barnhart 
concise dictionary of etymol um, of etymology. So we want to deal with the actual word uh, nigger, right, or negro, right? Excuse me, I got to correct my slides, man. I forgot to correct the slide. But notice what you see here. You see negro, and I want y'all to pay attention to this family because in this presentation I show other sources. But this is so that way you see the word Negro, as it says here, 1555, black skinned person from Africa or of African descent, borrowed from Spanish or Portuguese, Negro, borrowed from Spanish or Portuguese, Negro. Notice what it says here, black, Negro from Latin, Neger. It's not Niger. It doesn't have a J or just sound to it. Right? The Latin neger. Adjective 1594. So let me play it one more time just so that way you guys understand that we're not dealing with Niger. We're dealing with neger. All right? Let me play it one more time. Strong's G 3526. Neger. Niger. Strong's G 3526. Niger. Niger. All right. So I want you to hear that again, just so that way uh, you'll see. It's not pronounced Niger. It's the word Negro and Neger, which we see associated with Simeon. They are interchangeable. They are interchangeable. All right. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse one. I want to walk you through this. Verse one, it says this. Now there were in the church and family, that word church is a word of confusion. When you deal with the English language, and I'm not going to go into the deep, uh, the depths of this. I want to keep it simple. But when you deal with the English language, that word church is a proto Indo uh, European word that comes through the branch of what is called the Celts, right? It's a Celtic word, right? That word church, the very, the very first church is Stonehenge had nothing to do with what many try to force it into by saying that it's dealing with a, a the people. No, it's always dealt with the building. And the very first church is Stonehenge. Stonehenge. That word church began its use, uh, usage among the uh, Christian or more Catholicism in the fourth century. The Messiah never made any reference to this here. So as an Israelite, and I'm going to prove it, not in this lesson, I'll teach it over again, but the Messiah never said on this rock, he's going to build a church. They all spoke Hebrew. And the lingua franca at that time was the sister language, which was Arabic. So the Messiah from the Hebraic school of thought would have said, not said on this rock, I will build my church, but on this rock, I will build up the whole assembly of the congregation of witnesses, Israel. So contrary to what we may think, words have many words are important. The most high as I taught this past uh, lesson, part one, episode one, the purpose of tongues. I taught that, guess what? The uh, matter of fact, actually, I'm going to teach it in the upcoming one lesson. I'm not going to get into that, but to make a long story short, when we start understanding language, the Most High made it clear that he was going to use a foreign language to confirm this truth. But he didn't tell us to gravitate and just hold on to this foreign language. He made it clear that he is going to restore our original language. He was going to clean it up. He's going to make it pure. He's going to get out all the impurities. So words have meaning and, and words are very important. 
So I'm not going to disregard the ancient Hebrew because it, it had it not been for the ancient Hebrew, the most high leading me that down that path. A lot of the stuff that I'm sharing with you, I would. Because I wouldn't I wouldn't know to go this path. Initially, I was I was studying Israeli language. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into a family. I'm going to walk you through here. I don't want to take too much time. Now, there were in the assembly of witnesses, right, that was at Antioch, certain prophets and certain teachers, right, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Neger and Lucius or Lucius, however you want to pronounce it, of uh, Serene and Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, or Tetrarch, however you want to pronounce it, and Saul. So I got this task to prove to you that Barnabas was an Israelite, that Simeon was an Israelite, that Lucius was an Israelite, and Manaean was an Israelite. Let's get it in. Let's start with this word, Negro and Niger, or nigger, nigger. I already proved it to you, but I'm going to make sure. Is Negro interchangeable with nigger, right? What is the proper pronunciation of nigger? I already played it for you. All right, I'm not going to play this again. All right. So the etymology dictionary definition of nigger, as we pointed out, notice what it says. It says name for the river nigger, not Niger, mentioned by the by that name. Uh, 1520, you see Leo Africanus and family know the uh, Romans did not give Africa its name. Right. You'll see Afar. Right. Afri. Right. It. You see it in Josephus, and I taught on this, that the name Africa is actually a Shemitic word. Why? Because Abraham and his wife Keturah had a son by the name of Afer, right? And this is where you get the word Africa from. I'm, not, I'm just giving you a little quick overview on that. So uh, I know that uh, many will say that the original name is Akibulan even before then, but I'm just making it clear. African, uh, what we see, Africanus, African, or Africa, did not come from the uh, the Romans. All right, so we see here name of name for the river Neger, mentioned by the name that name, fifteen twenties, and we see Big River C or River of Rivers. So the Greek dictionary definition of Neger, we see it here. I played it, but notice what it says here. Right. This is what you'll see uh, for that word under the scriptures. That's that that's supposed to be a surname. Right. And I'm going to tell you, family, this is where you have to really cross reference everything because there are and that there's there is an agenda and I can prove it to you right here. And I'm going to prove it to you as we deal with Simeon, because notice you see nigger. That's how you pronounce it. But it says it's a surname, black. So why would they use, out of everyone in that text, why would they focus on Simeon to have a surname black? That doesn't make sense, right? That completely contradicts to those that try to speak and rail against skin doctrine. Those who teach that uh, nigger means black, right? And so this is proving that we have a black person inside the scriptures, right? That is teaching that's among the Christians. But I'm going to prove to you and I'm going to show you just with this lexicon itself, the agenda. So we see nigger, right? Black. So you notice how they direct us to Latin, but we're dealing with Israelites. We're not dealing with uh, people from Latin. We're not dealing with, uh, you know, those people. We're dealing with the Israelites. So how come? Why didn't they point us to Hebrew? 
why did they point us to Latin for the origin of this word, which is an absolute lie because we're dealing with a Shemitic people. So I'm going to show you that, that when we say, when it says the surname, his surname is not black. His surname, black. That's not a surname. I'm going to show you that that's actually a title. Here we go. So according to the Strong's, right? Hebrew and Greek Strong's, neger equals, it means black. And it's the surname of the prophet Simeon. So we are to believe that neger, which means black in Latin, is supposedly a surname for a so-called non-blood descendant of Israel who has an Israelite name. <laughs> Come on, family. See, when you start taking down and, and peeling off the layers of Christianity, the layers of Catholicism, because they're the same that Christianity is the daughter of Catholicism, no matter how they may try to tell you, oh, they're separate. No, they're the same, period. 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 What these uh, people here in this country are practicing, they are practicing Catholicism, period. They, they can go off this, oh, well, you know, we there's Eastern Orthodox. No, you're not practicing what the uh, Ethiopians have practiced. You're not honoring the Shabbat, right? You're not doing those things. You're celebrating Christmas and all that other stuff. So again, family, I want you all to pay attention to this. Now, pay attention to this thought. Right. We are to believe that neger, which means black in Latin, is supposedly a surname for a so-called non-blood descendant of Israel who has an Israelite name. What? Can't make this up, Jay Highstyle. Can't make this up. But we all were part of that delusion, especially if you've gone to school, if you've gone to seminary, you all are part of this delusion because we've been uh, programmed to say Niger versus Neger. And we are to believe that a non-Israelite, right, supposedly a non-Israelite, a non-blood descendant of Israel has a Hebrew Israelite name and that his title is black. So now we're supposed to believe that Simeon's title is Black Simeon. Come on, family. That, I'm just re, I'm going to I'm just reading you or quoting, reciting the logic that we've been uh, that's been pushed on us. The foolishness that uh, the delusion that they had us subscribing to. Now, guys, if that doesn't make sense, if that makes sense or it doesn't make sense. If it makes sense, type one. If it doesn't make sense, type two. If it if it does not make sense to you, like it didn't make sense to me, type two. Right? Because it makes it, it makes no sense when I just say it out loud like that. So a non-Israelite, a non supposedly a non-blood descendant of Israel, who has an Israelite name. Right, his surname basically is supposed to be. Uh, Simeon Black. Come on, family. Really? So his surname is actually Black. Yo, what's up, Black? Hey, we got the Black over here. You know, <laughs> come on, family. We got the Black. We got we got the Black who's over here uh, teaching, who's a prophet, who's a teacher. We're supposed to believe that. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go continue to work on this here. Let's let's work on this. So the Hebrew definition of Simeon, right? Now I want y'all to pay attention to this, right? Simeon, it tells us it's the name of five Israelites, but I want you to make a note of Simeon and Simon or Simon, right? So this Greek, this Greek mo, oh, excuse me, this Greek word here, Simoe, Simoe one, or however you want to pronounce it, right? Uh, Simeon, right? This this term, this word, uh, Simeon, 
right? It's supposed to be, right? These are Israelites, right? The name of five Israelites. But I want to prove to you that's incorrect. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. So Sume Eon, or Own, however you want to pronounce it, right? This is supposed to be, this is supposed to be uh, only five Hebrew Israelites. But notice what it lists here. The first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. The first, the son of Jacob. Number two, the Abraham's descendant. Number three, one who took the infant Jesus in, the, in his arms in the temple. Number four, a teacher at the church of Antioch. Number five, the original name of Peter. Right? So notice you don't see Simeon here. Doesn't list Simeon here. But we see that, and I'm going to prove to you that Simeon is a <laughs> brother, man. He is a nega or negas, right? In the Hebrew, nagad. I want to show you that this is where you have to start really opening your eyes to see how big this agenda is. So you see five Israelites li listed here. But we see a teacher at the church of Antioch. Is that who we are referring to? Maybe. Maybe that's what, maybe that's it. Maybe I just overlooked it. A teacher at the church of Antioch. But we see how they're really not giving him his due. But I'm going to break it down here. All right. Simeon is a Hebrew Israelite name. Right. Every text where you see the name Simeon is used uh, uh, you know, it's referring to an Israelite. So every text where you see the name Simeon is uh, th th that you see in the, that passage, whatever passages that you see, it's referring to an Israelite. Excuse the typo. I didn't spell check here. All right. So was Simeon an Israelite? Right. Was Simeon a proselyte? Right. He was an Israelite, but he wasn't a proselyte. Right. Key verse that proves Simeon was an Israelite. Let's see if this is going to prove it. Acts chapter 13, verse 42 through 44. It says here, and when the Judeans, that's where I put Judeans here, right? I, I removed you and put Judeans, right? When the Judeans were gone out of the synagogue or the Mash Khan, the Gentiles, in other words, the other nations that the non-blood descendants of Israel besought that these words might be preached to them the next Shabbat, right? So when the Judeans or uh, when Judah <laughs> were going out of the synagogue, and we know Judah is not just dealing with the tri tribe of Judah, but also we got the Benjamites, right? But when the tribe of Judah or the Judeans were gone out of the synagogue, the the people, the non-blood descendants of Israel, I don't like to just say Gentiles because Gentiles simply means nation, but the non-blood descendants of Israel besought that these words might be preached to them the next Shabbat, right? And we see here, now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Judeans and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of Yah or Yahweh, right? This is not referring to Simeon, right? But we're going to see here when we get back to verse one, Simeon, it was a prophet. He was a teacher, right? Who's in a nutshell schooled to Apostle Paul, right? Who's very instrumental with Apostle Paul, right? Notice this here. It says, and on the next Shabbat day, came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Yahweh. So it was the non-blood descendants of Israel coming to the Mashkan asking to be taught on the Shabbat. But guess what? Does that give us our clear answer that we're looking for? See, verse one says Barnabas, Simeon, uh, Lucius or Lucius, however you want to pronounce it, uh, and Menaean were prophets and teachers, right? Hmm. Did that, did that actually give us the answer? Did that give us concrete proof? 
Ah, I didn't, but I, we're going to have to come back to Simeon because I'm going to use others to prove it before we finish up with Simeon. So we proved that Simeon is a Hebrew name. But what about the others that are listed in that verse, that passage? We'll get back to Simeon. Are they are there any other proof that Barnabas, that Barnabas, Simeon, uh, Lucius or Lucius, however you want to pronounce it, and Menaean were Israelites? Are there any proof? Right. Let's go to Barnabas. Let's prove that Barnabas was an Israelite. Because this is not going to make sense when I prove to you everyone that I highlighted, they're going, they are Israelites. So we're going to prove that Barnabas is an Israelite. We're going to pass over and we'll get back to it. Lucius, uh, uh, Lucius or whatever, we're going to prove that he is an Israelite. We're going to prove that all of them are Israelites. Right. So here's the proof that Barnabas was an Israelite. Acts chapter four, verse 36. Straightforward. Notice what you see here. And. Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, right, which is inter being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus. Now, family, make a note of Cyprus. Somebody make sure if you're watching this, underline the word Cyprus. Make a note of Cyprus. I, I really want you guys to pay attention. Cyprus. All right. Cyprus. Make a note of that. Cyprus, because we're going to we're going to we're going to go back to this word. You want to see it again. And I want to prove that those four individuals in that passage, they're Israelites without a shadow of a, of a doubt. Right. So here's the proof. Right. Proof that Lu, uh, Lucius or Lucius, uh, Lucius of Serene was an Israelite. Let's let me show you here. Acts chapter two. Verse five and six. Let's see if this proves that Lucius is a an Israelite. Let's see what it says. And there were dwelling in, at Jerusalem, Judeans, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Family, that is a key verse, because when you read Acts chapter two, right, it lists all the nations that these Israelites were coming from all uh, all of, from abroad coming in to honor this feast day here. It wasn't just about coming in and honoring uh, the Pent uh, Pentecost. Pentecost, Pente means 50. That's, that's, you know, getting into the church stuff. You no, know, that's Kojic. That's, you know, the apostolic. You no, know, the Israelites were not coming together to honor Pentecost of what is taught in the church. All right, so these devout men came on a pilgrimage right? That's required. Deuteronomy chapter 16, 16 gives you the three pilgrimage uh, feasts that, that the men and their families were required to travel and be part of. So, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Judeans, devout men out of what? Every nation under heaven. Now, when this noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that Every man heard them speak in his own language. So you had these devout Israelites coming from every nation, these nations that are listed here inside this passage. And of course, they were speaking another language and they heard the disciples. They heard the people that came out of this house that was filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in languages that they were familiar with. So this tells you that you had Israelites living in other territories that spoke other languages, not just Greek, but spoke other languages. All right. So, again, there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Judeans, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, let's go and continue with uh, Acts chapter two. Uh, verse seven through 10, but actually I, I put five in here as well, but we'll just start it from there. We'll read it from there. Notice what it says. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Ju Judeans, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So they and they were all amazed and Marvel saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? It's like, wait a minute, how are they speaking this language? 
Yes, these Israelites were asking a question that came from some of these areas where they were dwelling, right? That was speaking another language. Actually, how is it possible that the disciples and the others that accompany them are speaking in a language that they're familiar with? And how we how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. So these Israelites were born in other lands, under other territories, speaking a foreign language, heard the disciples and others speaking a language that they were not taught. Verse 10, excuse me, verse 9. Uh, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and uh, Cappadocia, uh, and Pontus, and Asia, and Phryg Phryg um, Phrygia, or in Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Serene. Wait a minute, you see Serene, right? Libya, you know this is the northern part of Africa. This is not just a, what many try to minimize to be Northeast Africa. We're dealing with the northern part of Africa, Libya, Africa. So we see that there were Israelites in all of these places here. All of these places, including Libya, including Serene, right? So make a note of Serene. You see Serene here, right? I want you to pay attention. And then when it deals with uh, Rome, it says in strangers of Rome, Jews or Judeans and proselytes. So you had the Israelites that was there in Rome, but then you had the converts, right? Converts that was uh, all here uh, hearing and witness this, this, this miracle. So in the parts of Libya about Serene, here's another key Israelite, right? Here's another key Israelite man from Serene. Matthew chapter 27, verse 32. Notice this. Right. And you don't see him mentioned in that definition that I gave you. And as they came out, they found a man of Serene, Simeon by name. Remember, we told we taught we, we realized we, we we I share with you that Simeon and Simon. Guess what? They are. He that is a Hebrew name. Right. It says by name. Him they compelled to bear the, his cross. In other words, carry the cross of the Messiah. So let me go back to this definition here real quick. Let's go back here real quick. Let me bring it back up. Right. Notice, remember, I told you to make a note of Simone, right? Simeon, Simone, Simeon, Simone. Right. So you just see um, Simone, right? That name in Simeon comes from the same Greek word. Ultimately, these this is a Hebrew name. So how come we don't see this person listed here? How come we don't see that person listed here of carrying the cross of carrying the carrying the, um, the, the cross of the um, Messiah? How come we don't see him here? But I just share with you. That we see another name for him. All right, so let's go back here. All right. So we see they found a man of Serene, Simone by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. So guess what, family? Guess who Simone is? Guess who Simone is? See, Simone is an Israelite who's in the territory, in the area, traveled from Serene to do what? Honor Passover. They didn't have to look far because he's what? He's right there. So Simone, which his name is also interchangeably changeable with Simeon. Guess what? He is the one that carried the cross of the Messiah. So guess what? Uh, Simone is an Israelite. He was actually out here honoring the Shabbat. He was honoring the Passover. He was honoring the feast days. Oh, but I'm not going to stop there, family. So remember, make a note of this name here. Make a note of this territory because we, I'm going to give you some I'm going to give you some nice pieces of I'm, I'm going to help increase your artillery. I'm going to help increase your your weapon, your when I say weapon, your 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 tool shed. I'm going to increase that so that way you will be able to rightly divide this and you'll be able to knock down a lot of the foolishness that we see. So as you see here. Barnabas was from Cyprus, right? Lucius was from Serene, 
Remember I told you to make a note of these two places. Please make a note because I'm walking you through. Now, I proved to you that Barnabas is an Israelite, right? I'm going to prove to you that Lu Lucius was also an Israelite because watch, watch this. Note, make a note of Cyprus. Make a note of Serene. Are there any other proof that there were Israelites in Cyprus? Uh-huh. Let's go to Acts chapter 11, verse 19 and 20. Notice what it says here. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the, uh, the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice, Cyprus. Wait a minute. We see that Cyprus there. Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto Judah only. Oh, wait a minute. So we see Stephen, right, traveling to these different areas. He's not teaching anyone that are not blood, um, that, that, that are not blood descendants of Israel. He's not teaching those guys. He's focusing on Judah. He's focusing on the southern kingdom. He's focusing on Israelites, right? Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice, Cyprus, and Antioch preaching the word to none but unto Judah only. Oh, wait a minute. So notice you see Cyprus. You see Cyprus, right? But we ain't stopping right there because the very next verse is going to shut it down. Notice what we see here. The next verse. And some of them were men of what? Cyprus and Serene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, saying, preaching, um, um, preaching, Adonijah, in other words, Lord, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, the Christ. So if some of them were men of Cyprus, some of them were serene, but guess what? They all that he targeted, Stephen targeted, was Israelites only. Didn't the text just say that? So notice what we see Cyprus and we see serene. So we just proved. We just proved that just just two of them so far, Israelites. Uh oh, uh oh, it's, it's heating up in here. Some of them were men of Cyprus and Serene. So let's deal with the Hebrew word Grecians. Notice what Grecians mean, right? Hellenistes. Notice what it says. It says a Hellenist or Greek speaking Hebrew. I don't like to see the word Jew because that's a word of confusion. I'd rather say uh, Israelite. Not a he a Greek speaking Jew, an Israelite, right? Any Israelite that's speaking uh, or becoming an, an Hellenist, being influenced by the Greeks and taking on their culture, any Israelite. Not they don't become a Jew. That's just uh, they, it's Israelite. Any Greek speaking Israelite. So I want to make it clear. All right. As you see, one who imitates the manners and customs or the worship of Greeks and use the Greek tongue. And in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign land or Israelites born in foreign land, not Jews, Israelites born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. Again, that word Jew is a word of confusion. I encourage you guys to watch the lesson that I did. It's under the foundational playlist. And I completely give you clarity on that word Jew. That's why I don't use the word because it's a word of confusion. That word Jew is not supposed to be used synonymously or interchangeably with all of Israel. It's supposed to be used simply for if you want to use it as a transliteration of a transliteration, then you use it for Judah, the tribe or Judah, the southern kingdom, but not all of Israel. That's why this word is deceiving so many people. OK, so let's deal with many uh, Manaean. Right. I already proved to you two of them. Emphatically, really, I already proved to you that Simeon is an Israelite, but so far proved. Right. Simeon is an Israelite and we're going to circle back to him. But I proved that Barnabas and I proved that uh, Lish, um, um, Lysias or whatever. I proved that he is an Israelite. Now let's prove Menaean because it says he, he, which had been brought up with Herod. Hmm. He was an Israelite. I know when you see Herod, many of you guys already know Herod was an Edomite, but how was Menaean 
brought up with Herod, how is he still an Israelite? How do we have an Israelite and an Herodian occupying the same space? Well, when you understand the, the period of the Maccabees, that old that whole era, you'll see the king of Judah allowed Edomites to dwell among Israelites, which he wasn't supposed to do, but he did it. Right. I, I believe his name was Hernanicus. Right. He allowed uh, Edomites to dwell among uh, Judah. So that's the answer. But I'm going to give you proof. Let's go back to Acts chapter 13, verse one. Let's see what it says. Now there were in, now there were in the church or should I say the assembly of witnesses that was at Antioch, certain prophets, teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, Simeon that was called Neger and Lucius of Serene and Menaean. Now we're going to have to deal with Menaean. Let's let's deal with Menaean. Was Menan an Israelite? Mm. Let's answer this question with Josephus. This is coming from the Antiquities of the Jews, page 565. Notice what this says here. Now there was one of the Essenes. Oh, wait a minute. What did we just see here? What did you guys just see here? <laughs> now, <laughs> you see this here? Now there was one of these Essenes whose name was Menahim, who had this testimony that he not only conducted his life after an excellent manner, but had the foreknowledge of the future of future events given him by God also. This man was once, this man once saw Herod when he was a child and going to school and saluted him as king of the uh king of Judah or the Israelites, but he thinking that either he didn't know him or that he was in jest, put him in mind that he was but a private man, but Men Menahim or Menahim uh, smiled to himself and clapped at him on his backside. In other words, give him a pat on the butt, clapped him on his backside uh, with his hand and said, however that be, thou will be king and will begin thy reign happily. Right. But notice here. Right. Doesn't this you see the similarities of how this is reading? We're dealing with the same person here. But notice it says now there was one of these Essenes. Oh, so Menahim. This is the same person. Menahim was an Essene. Well, I know some of you guys probably figuring out, trying to wonder, well, what is an Essene? So according to Josephus, Mene, uh, Mene, Menean was an Essene. So when we go to Josephus, for us, the works of Josephus, unabridged, complete and unabridged, right? Notice what you see here. At this time, there was three sects of uh, sex among the Israelites who had different opinions concerning human actions. The one was called the sect of Pharisees, of the Pharisees. Another, the sect of the Sadducees. And the other, the sect of who? The Essenes. So we see that the Essenes are Israelites. We have the testimony of Josephus. Wait a minute. Family, we just proved that there is a three Israelites, right? We just proved three other Israelites in Acts chapter 13, verse one. <laughs> Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on, family. So you see Josephus give a rec give record of three different groups, right? You had the Pharisees when we see when we get into uh, uh, the testimonies of the uh, the disciples, we see that the Pharisees, they, uh, you know, they were very, you know, if we want to say legalistic, right? The Pharisees, right? They were, uh, they, they were one of the groups that constantly came against the Messiah, right? Uh, but they did believe in resurrection. The Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection, right? That's the difference between the two that we see inside the Holy Text. 
We also see the Sanhedrin, right? If you study the history, you'll understand that uh, King Herod replaced most of the Sanhedrin with Edomites. And many of the Pharisees were Edomites. So that's why you see uh, um, John chapter eight, right? And I'll explain that later. When you hear these particular group of people saying to the Messiah, uh, you know, we are Abraham's seed, but we never knew bondage. That's a whole nother lesson right there. Not getting into that, but getting, getting back here, we see Essenes. We see the Essenes, the sect of the Essenes. So we just identified that Menaean, right, was an Essene, right? He was, he was an Essene, and the Essenes are Israelites, right? So Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, or Lucius, however you want to pronounce it, and Menaean were Israelites. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, family? We just shut it down. But I'm not going to stop there. I got to finish with Simeon because I need to circle back to Simeon because that's the one we're going to really use. If you use him properly, <laughs> if you use Simeon properly, properly teach Simeon, you'll understand his color of his skin was not a title, right? Because they all were melanated people. But we're going to see when we see Neger or Nagad, we're going to see that don't follow the delusion like we've been institutionalized when we're studying the ancient text. We're, we're taught to go by way of the Greek, go by way of the Latins, but it doesn't tell you to go the route of the Israelites and some of the other Shemitic groups that are connected with them. You don't see the see us going that route. It's always go the way of the Europeans. Always go away of the that the way that's going to lead you further away from the truth. See, we want to deal with this family. Let, let, let's break this down. Simeon wasn't called the title Neger because of his skin complexion, but because of his position. Let me say that again. Simeon wasn't called the title of Neger or Negar, or Negus, or Nagad, because of his skin complexion, but because of his position that he was in, right? So Negro, Neger, guess what? They are interchangeable or connected to the word Neger. Negro, Neger, not Niger, they all are connected with the word Neger. They're all interchangeable. Let me prove this here. Let's go to the Century Dictionary, 1895, right? Let's go to the Century Dictionary, 1895, definition of neger. And I want you all to pay attention to here. Notice what you see here. Neger, not Niger, but notice what you see here. Neger with one G. You see neger. You see neger. Neger, right? And you see what also do you see here? Notice this portion right here. Pay attention to this. Watch. I'm going to read it. Nigger is not as generally supposed a corruption of Negro. Wait a minute. So the origin of this word, the, uh, before the Europeans began to push their agenda, before the Europeans began to colonize and force their stuff on our people, guess what? That word nigger, that word nigger, negro, guess what? It was not a negative. It was not a corruption of negro. They were all interchangeable, right? That's what this is saying. Nigger is not as generally supposed a corruption of Negro, but is regularly developed from the earlier form of what? Neger. Oh, there you go, family. Come on now. I just gave you some facts right here with sources. So I know that some of you guys want to do this. If you don't want to do this, but you probably do it anyway. Here, I know you guys want to do this. But family, we're not going to stop there. 
So we see the word nigger, right? N-I-G-G-E-R. We see the association with nigger, N-I-G-E-R. And we see how it, nigger is not as generally supposed a corruption of Negro. But notice this portion of it. Notice this portion of this section of the de definition I'm going to highlight. But we see entry number one, we see a black man, a Negro, right? But then when we get to the English, right, this American stuff that you see here, this is not true English. <laughs> this is a whole different, um, whole different language, right? It's like a slang of English. Notice what it says here. Nigger is more English in form than Negro. In other words, we're dealing with the meaning of it because no, notice what it says here. It was formerly and to some extent still is used without appropriate intent, right? But notice what it says here. But its use is now confined to colloquial or illiterate speech. So we see that this word was a positive word, nigger, Negro right? These were positive words, but because of, well, we could, we could pinpoint it to our oppressors. They decided to take positive things that were positive, positive titles, and they made it into, they formed a colloquial, uh, co colloquialism. They formed a slang of these positive titles and made it negative to us to now our brothers and sisters. I saw a football player. I can't remember his name talking about referring that be, he had a Caucasian football player tell him he should not use the word and call himself schooling him. It was completely incorrect. But its use is now confined to colloquial or illiterate speech. Right. And notice what you see here. These are some examples right here. These are some of the examples here. So let's go to the Oxford Compact Dictionary definition of nigger. And I'm going to show you here, right? I have this book. These are screen prints from the book, right? Notice this. Nigger, N-I-G-G-E-R. Oh, wait a minute. Variant of N-I-G-G-A-R-D. Niggard. Whoa, wait a minute. See, if you understand ancient Hebrew, if we go to the primitive root word, we'll see the Danan, the Gamal, and the Daloth. So if we pronounced it from an ancient Hebraic perspective, it would be Nagad. <laughs> Nagad, rather. Nagad. Oh, you see the connection to the ancient Hebrew? You see the connection here? We need to give the garbage can to this deception. You guys see the deception? You guys see the delusion? You guys see how we've been incorrectly taught? Oh, y'all better, y'all better catch hold of this family. So notice, notice this again. Let me let me show you here. Nigger, right? And I, and as you see. Variant of N I G G A R D, nigard, right? We also see nigger, right? Nigger in E G E R, nigger, right? N I G E R. We see the word Negro, but now we see it, the colloquialism that was added to it. And this is key right here. It says, uh, contempt of the poor blacks or niggers as they are uh, as they are there called there they're dealing with the U.S. right United States seems the national sins of America wait a minute the niggers right the national sin of America oh y'all better pay attention to that family y'all better pay attention to that but we're not going to stop right there. So again, that article, I mean, that definition says that this word nigger, right? The colloquial portion of it, contempt of poor blacks or 
niggers, as they are called, seems the national sins of America. Now, let's see if we can further connect this. Right? Hmm. So we see niggers, right? Right? We see niggers, right? They're still all connected. <laughs> we see niggers. Title of the ruler of Abyssinia. 1590s. Amharic, Semitic. See, family, this is where we have to go deeper into our studies. Because, again, this is not going to take you to what is called Ge'ez or Ga'az. Many will refer to it as Ge'ez. See, Amharic is the interpolated language of the Ethiopians. Amharic is a Shemitic language, but it comes from the primitive, which is the original, which is Ga'az or Ge'ez, which had no, none of these vowels that we see today that many keep trying to uh, push and say that they were there. No. Ge'ez or Ga'az, that's why I refer to it as Ga'az, didn't have no E sounds, didn't have no U sounds, didn't have no U sounds, didn't have no O sounds, didn't have no A sounds. Just the Ah associated with every consonant. And that language came from ancient Hebrew. Some refer to it as Paleo Hebrew. And ancient or Paleo Hebrew did not have all these vowel movements. So when you're saying using A sounds, O sounds, O sounds, guess what? You're not speaking the ancient language of Moses. You're not speaking the ancient, the original language that Torah was written in. You're speaking an interpolated language. That's not ancient biblical Hebrew. So as we see here, Negas, title of the ruler of Abyssinia, right? Matter of fact, family, let me just do this real quick. I said I wasn't going to go there, but let me just do this real quick, family, because I want to make sure that you guys understand where I'm going at with this. Let me give you a little proof with what I stated about the uh, get as. Let me just put this up here. Let me put this up here. You know, because I, I got I have to keep reminding, putting reminders here. Let me put this up here real quick. Let me copy this from this presentation and we get right wrap it up because I got I have one more thing I want to share that's going to tie everything together. And like I said, I stand firm on this. And anyone that one come like 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 we say back in the day, who want come test? I'm not hard to find. <laughs> I'm not hard to find. I stand on all of what's being taught here. All right. So let me pull up this portion right here. Let me give you share this nugget with some of you guys that may not know this. And guess what? I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. Uh, none of our Hebrew uh, brothers in this community are teaching what I'm sharing with you when it comes to the ancient Hebrew. None of these none of these are going to share this source right here. And if they just started sharing it, I can guarantee you they got it from here, which is fine. You know, but I can guarantee you most of these brothers and sisters are not going to they're not going to touch this source right here. You know, especially those that are uh, bent on just te continuing with the delusion of this uh, language that we hear today. That's disguised as ancient Hebrew. Let me see here. Let me pull it up here. All right. There we have it. Let me pull it over here. Right before we wrap up, let me pull it over here. All right. Let me see here where we are and then we'll wrap it up here, family. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to put it right here. Right. I'm going to prove to you. That. What I just stated about get uh, got eyes. I'm going to prove it to you right now. Here we go. All right. So let's pull it up right now. Here we go. Right. Another language that vocalizes each consonant with ah without specifically marking that sound is got eyes or get as or some will refer to it as geese but notice this here before the fourth century 
Ge'ez or Ga'az had not made use of vowels, but the usage of vowels were was incorporated into Ge'ez. Wait a minute, family. You, you see what I just said, right? This this is backing up exactly what I just pointed out. Let me read it again, right? Let me read it again. Let me read it again. Let me read it again, right? Before the fourth century, Ge'ez or Ga'az had not made use of vowels, but the usage of vowels was incorporated into Ge'ez or Ga'az when the Askumites converted to what? Christianity. When they converted to Christianity. When they were converted to Christianity. So prior to that, how did it read? Before they converted to Christianity, before they began to sell out their, their, their heritage, what was it pronounced? Notice what it says. How was, how was these words pronounced, right? It says here, Askemites converted to Christianity, which occurred sometime in the fourth century. Pankhurst, right, suggests that the reason that the alphabets were modified at the time could have been due to the wish to make biblical texts more intelligible to newly illiterate. So they saying that they interpret, interpolated this language, changed this language to make it more intelligible to those that are being the, the new uh, ones that are being that, that are learning this language for the first time. But notice this family. This is ancient Ga'az. These are the letters. This is the Saba'an or Sabine language. It comes from. These are Shemitic languages. So notice how it reads, family. For some of my brothers and sisters that are subscribed to the Patreon channel, and you saw this in lesson number one, notice what this says: A ba ga da za ta a ya ka la ma sa sa a sa a ka a ra wa za ha ha na sa sa ta fa. Wait a minute. <laughs> Where's the O sounds? Where's the O sounds? Where's the E sounds? Come on, family. This straight to the point. Like my old pastor used to say, it's tight, but it's right. So I proved to you that Simeon is an Israelite, but let's not stop there. Let's let's continue. Let's let's wrap this up, family. So does Negus Nagai means King of Kings, Lord of Lords? Because that was one of the questions, especially when I shared the KRS one video. But notice what this says here: Negus, Nagaste, Niggers, Nega. They are all the same word. They all the same word. These are Shemitic words. It says a unique derivation of an ancient title. Wait a minute. Let's, let's go back here. A unique derivation of an ancient title. Wait a minute. Let me let me say that one more time, family. I, I may have to uh, go slow motion on this. Let me say it in slow motion. Right. <laughs> Unique derivation of an ancient title for the people in the back. So, a unique derivation of an ancient title. So when you see nega, right? When you see nega with an association with Simeon, it's not a title of being black. It's not a title referring to his skin complexion. Those who try to teach and say that Israelites are pushing skin doctrine, but yet in these poor commentaries, these poor teachers 
and the church and and Christianity and psych Catholicism are pushing skin doctrine when it comes to Simeon. So you see that negas nagaste, which would in uh, in the Amharic or the Ge'ez, ancient Ge'ez would be nagasta, right? Niggers, nigga is a unique deriv derivative of an ancient title, not just talking, not, not a skin complexion. So negas is king, a term originated from Abyssinia, a king used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia, right? This term is originated by its native Ethiopian Amharic language. Actually, the native, the origin is Ga'az, not Amharic, as I just explained to you. Since the creation of the title Negas, has been used to identify, but to psychologically change the minds of captive Africans to rethink of themselves as someone less than whom they are. Aren't we seeing that right now? Many Western names like negas originated from religious texts like the Bible. It's telling you that, hey, these words are some of these ancient texts, right? The Bible, Hinduism, the Quran. Telling you that in ancient texts, you see different variations of this word. But family, let me give you the proof. Let me give you the proof. Let me give you the proof. Let me fast forward here. Let's go back to the Oxford Compact Dictionary definition of negus. Let's see what it says. Notice what you see here. Negus, right? I'm Harik. Negas or neg Nagas, right? Nagas, king, right? It says king, king. The title of the supreme ruler of Abyssinia. But family, see, I'm going to shut this nonsense down about our brother Simeon because I'm not going to stop there. Because this wasn't just with Amharic. This is not just with the Ethiopians. But let's go to the Israelites. What is the Hebrew word that's synonymous to negas? Guess what? Here it is. Right? Here you see nagid. Nagid. This is the uh, the um, karet yod, which makes the E sound. And the karet that's make, that just simply makes the is sound like in sit. But as you see here, a commander, civil, military, or religious chief, governor, leader. But guess what? We see a couple of no, uh, notable titles that's not here. Like king, because king should be part of this definition here. That should be part of this message, um, this, this uh, definition here. Lord, in terms of superintendent, should be listed under here. It should be listed under here. If we go backwards, say, let me, uh, I don't have it here. I got this block in here. Let me put an animation here. So that way you can see the backdrop here, family. And then we're going to wrap this up because it's, it's, it's past my bedtime. And I was supposed to work on a presentation tonight. So I got to get it done tomorrow. Got a major briefing I have to do. So let's see here. Let's. All right, there you go. Notice what you see here. Now, the primitive root word is na God. You will not see, the, uh, you'll see this here in the ancient Hebrew, but it'd be the na, the ga, and the da, right? Now, remember what I said. Let's go back to this slide here before I break this word down from the kingship, royalty among the Israelites. Let's go back to this slide here, what I read earlier right let's go back here real quick right remember what i said n g d right nigger variant of nigard so if this was ancient hebrew you want to remove one of the g's because it wasn't two g's 
but it'd be or gamal, it'd be nagad. <laughs> nagad, right? N G D. That's important, right? So let's go back here. And we're going to see NGD. Watch this. Watch this. Right? And I should have put the ancient up here, but NGD. That's the primitive root. Right? It tells you to go to 5046. When you go there, you'll see Nagad. So, Nagad. How come we don't see king here? We see, the, we do see, uh, let's see here, honorable themes. Captain, chief, excellent, governor, leader, noble, prince, ruler. So, yeah, we can put leader under as the surname or the title of Simeon. He was the head, Nagad, Negaz, Negar, and Charge. But we don't see king here. Why don't we see king here? That's the question that we should be asking. Does this word associate with kings? Just like how we saw in the Ethiopian, uh, you know, uh, definitions that I gave here that's pointing to the in in Ethiopian for us, the Abyssinians. So 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 16. Tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain. Wait a minute. We just saw this word, right? Nagad or Nagayad. And again, the primitive root would just have Nagad, the Na, the uh, Gamal, and the Daloth. But here we see the Yad in this particular pronunciation of it. But we see that this is referring to who? King Saul. So thou shalt anoint him to be captain. Why didn't they put king here? Because he was anointed to be king, not just captain. Second Samuel five and two. I got other sources, other scriptures, but I just kept it simple. And we see here, thou shalt feed my people, Israel. Thou shalt be captain over Israel. Right. Referring to King David. I could give you other sources that, that's using that word that's synonymous to negas. Right. From the Ethiopians. That means kings. So we see that king should be part of this definition. This should cause you to ask questions. Why don't we see the word king there in the definition? <laughs> how, how come we don't see that? You see what I'm saying, family? This is straightforward. This completely knocks out anyone that comes up with any nonsense trying to say Simeon was not an Israelite. Let's give him a three piece. All right. Not sure what's going on with these uh, videos here. For some reason, it's kind of locking up here on my end. So it's not playing clearly, but hopefully you guys can see it clearly on your end. So I want to make sure you guys understand this family. want to make sure you guys understand this, that uh, what I share with you completely shut down anyone that tried to say that Simeon was not an Israelite. Simeon was the head, not God, in charge. Let me say that again, family. I just proved to you that Simeon, I just proved to you that Simeon, right? He, was, he didn't have the title of being black. That's racist. That's getting into the institution of race. But actually, Simeon, had the title of being the head, Nagad, Negaz, Negar, <laughs> Negaz, or Niger in charge. 
point blank. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the father. Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.